So for this episode, we thought we'd do something a little bit different. And since the weather is absolutely stunning today, let's go for a walk. <laughs> started when I was about eight years old. Um, my family took me to Jamestown, Virginia, I think it was, or maybe it was Williamsburg, and that's where I saw glass blowing for the very first time, and I was really enthralled. Eight years of age is a really impressionable time for a child. And when I was 12, I saw my first mosaic. It was in the shop of a friend's mom, she made Petrodura necklaces and I begged and begged my mom to buy me one of these necklaces and eventually she gave in and did buy me the necklace and I still have it to this day. I don't wear it but I do keep it in the studio and gallery to remind me where it all started for me. The first mosaic I ever created was a piece called Hannah's Rainbow and what a lot of people don't really know is that this piece was actually inspired by the painting of an artist whose name I don't know. Uh, it was a painting that I saw a year earlier in Reykjavik, Iceland, and I fell in love immediately with this painting and I wanted to do a translation of it in glass and in mosaic. So that's exactly what I did and I set about doing this by creating a sketch of the painting and then inserting my own elements such as these black lines going across it. And really that's how the, the piece Hannah's Rainbow came about. It was uh, based on someone else's work. The second piece I created is a piece called Yggdrasil and that's a piece that's actually not shown on my website. Um, this piece was actually inspired by a vision that I had. It was actually a, a scary vision. I saw someone die. Um, it didn't actually happen, luckily, but uh, I was still left with the emotion of um, someone dear to me passing away, and I didn't know what to do with the emotions. So that's really the... Um, yeah, the inspiration behind the piece. And what I wanted to show was that out of death, there's always a rebirth. And that's really what this piece is about. There's a lot of symbolism built into the piece, especially uh, metamorphosis. And that's symbolized by the two butterflies on each of the trees. My favorite work, my absolute, absolute favorite work, is without question a piece called Innocence. You might argue, or one might argue, that it's just a grayscale. It's white, gray, and black. But to me, it's so much more than that because it's about innocence. And the white bit symbolizes a newborn child who is completely innocent. And, of course, the black part is somebody who is the opposite of innocent. And I was very much taken uh, in the early 70s by the first Star Wars film when that came out. I will never forget waiting in long, long line just to get in to see that film. And the whole idea that you can choose the good side or the dark side that's really what this piece is about. So that is definitely, without question, my absolute favorite piece. Yes, I actually did almost stop. Um, it was about two years after I'd started with my first piece. I pretty much hit a wall 
and felt rather disappointed and actually seriously thought about stopping. I was in the middle of working on a piece called Passion Rekindled. The original title of the piece was actually Passion. And halfway through working on the piece, I just seriously wanted to stop creating art. I just couldn't see the point of doing it any further. Uh, but somehow I reached deep, deep, deep inside and found the will to continue, which is why it's called Rekindled, Passion Rekindled. And you can actually see in the piece, if you read it from left to right, you can see the flame going out and then literally being rekindled and turning into a bright red hot flame again. The central theme of my work, I would have to say, um, are, yeah, it's emotions and feelings. And what I'm trying to do is show the positive in all things, because of course lots of things that we perceive as negative happen, and there's always something good out of it. Nothing is ever, ever wasted. So, you know, the same thing goes for loss or death. We see it as a loss, but there's always a rebirth coming out of that, and that's really what I'm trying to show. I think my work resonates with a lot of people because, yeah, everyone experiences emotions and feelings much like what's inspired my work. So that would be why I think a lot of uh, people really feel moved by some of the pieces that I've created. by one of the pieces that, that I created. And well, that was for me quite touching. And uh, a close second uh, would be all the bloggers who have been writing in their blogs about how much they like my work and unbeknownst to them, I'm reading this. So keep it up, I love it, it's great. Uh, definitely helps me with motivation as well. So yeah. I actually studied fashion design and textile design, not glass, and um, well, everything that I studied and, and learned in university I'm using now actually because the interest points that um, inspired my work back then, I'm using them now. It's light reflectance, color, and texture, and all of that you can see in my work. No, actually I didn't start off as a glass artist when I graduated. I was back in 1991. Um, I started off as an assistant buyer working in the fashion industry. And although at the time it was really cool to be able to tell people that I was being flown around on the corporate jet up and down, um, after three years, I was pretty much done. I was designing and buying for a chain of stores, 300 stores. Um, and then from there, I went into the side of production. 
and dealt with the factories negotiating prices and whatnot. And from there, I got a great job working for a company and basically I did everything. It was a startup position as all of them were, but it was for a really, really well-known fashion label, uh, internationally known, everybody knows them. And basically, every job that I've had, I've taken away some really big lessons. The first job, I learned about the industry. I learned about how to design and merchandise a line. The second job, I learned about politics. And, well, let's face it, there's always gonna be politics. The third job taught me everything that I, up until that point, knew about business and how to start up and run a successful business. And that was really key. From there, I went on uh, to the management level. And from there, um, there was also a six month stint working for a PR department. And although it seemed really like a total sidestep totally unrelated to what I was doing at the time, I am so thankful that I did it because I'm using it now in my own business. And basically, nothing is ever wasted, like I always tell people, and you always use every single lesson you've learned, even though there might have been an experience that was, you could call it not fun, um, or, yeah, I won't call it negative, but you could say it was unpleasant. But at the end of the day, you learn something from that. And that's really the message that I'd like to share with you today. The message that I would give to artists starting off today would have to be learn the business. Um, you already can do the art, but you need to learn the business side. Learn from everyone in every direction you can possibly think of. Just learn as much as you can. Learn how to promote yourself. You really have to be able to promote yourself in this world, otherwise you're just sitting around waiting for handouts or basically sitting in a kind of victim role. So it's about taking charge of your life, taking charge of um, yeah, of your business, and it is a business, because if you can't earn a living doing it, then it's just a hobby. It's just something that you do for fun. So you really need to learn all aspects of the business, from marketing and merchandising to sales, and most artists don't really enjoy the whole sales aspect of it, but if you don't have confidence in yourself and you can't sell your work, at the end of the day, why should you expect someone else to sell your work for you? Wow, you know, if somebody tells you your work is beautiful, but, you know, nice, but no, no go, don't listen to any negativity, always persist. In a word, persist, persist, persist. In society, the most successful people are the people who persisted, but what we don't ever see is all the struggles and all the hard work that they had to, to do to get to where they are. So, surround yourself with positivity, always look at the bright side, you know, you can turn any situation around, no matter how terrible or desperate it might seem. I mean, if, you're, if your landlord comes knocking on your door and says, hey, dude, your, your rent is late, and here's uh, Mr. So-and-so, and he's gonna rent your space out, that is an opportunity for you. Instead, instead of just laying over and, and, and saying, okay, I give up, sell to the guy who wants to rent your space. That's another person who didn't see your art before, who now is seeing your art for the first time. So that's why I keep saying, learn to promote yourself, believe in your path. And if you believe in your path, you're gonna get there. It's just a question of when. So no matter what anybody says, you know, if somebody says something negative, don't listen. If somebody says something positive, take that and use it to build you up to the next level. And no matter what, do not give up. Take it from me, do not give up, because you never know what masterpieces you're going to create in the future, or what masterpieces you have lying around now. So, in a, in a word, persist. Wow, 
on my direction. Well, in 2004 I did my first sculpture, that was Life is Beautiful. In 2000, no, actually that was 2005 I did my first sculpture. In 2006 I did uh, Spark of Life. And now in 2007, my direction is really more in the, the realm of public art because I just want to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger with my art. So uh, what you can expect to see from me would be some, some bigger public commissions. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, sky's the limit, you know? It's like, if you dream big, you can achieve big. So if you don't shoot for the stars, you're never going to make it. So you just dream big, shoot for the stars. Hey, and if you end up at the moon, that's not a bad thing. But uh, if you don't try, you won't get there. So I'm definitely now. In five years, let's see. Well, goals are really good to have. It's pretty much like a business plan. So without some artistic goals, yeah, you probably won't reach your destination, at least not in the time frame that you want. So I would have to say that my goals in the next five years are to have completed multiple public installations and sculptures that hopefully millions of people will have seen. And I hope that lots and lots of those people will at least experience some joy at looking at my work and who knows maybe I'll actually inspire some people in the process to follow their own hearts and their own dreams so yeah that's pretty much where I see myself in five years I will have uh, executed a, a large number of, of public projects Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed our little tour of Rotterdam. Actually, this was just a very small part of Rotterdam. But in any event, it gives you a little taste of the city that I call home. And I hope to see you here. Bye-bye.